So welcome to Foothill Autism Alliance. Uh, pleased to see everybody. We've got some extraordinary young speakers uh, here tonight. And uh, I'm Yudi Bennett. I'm a past president of FAA. And I just wanted to also encourage you to pick up a flyer in the back. Our next presentation in October will be on the body-brain connection, benefits of exercise. We've got great speakers coming up for that. And if you're interested in becoming a member of FAA, if you're not already a member, there's uh, pamphlets in the back and you can help support the Foothill Autism Alliance. Uh, before we get started, we, we do film our presentations or video our presentations, so I'm just going to ask if you move around, be mindful of the fact that there's a camera back there. Um, unless you want to be on camera and then you can wave. But uh, uh, we do then post these to our website so that uh, parents who weren't able to make it and, and families can watch the videos later. <coughs> Uh, so I'd like to first of all introduce John Schock, who's on our board, who has a quick announcement, and then we'll get started with our program. I'm not one of the young people. <laughs> all right, it's duck season for those of you that have been around a while. No, I thought it was rabbit season. <laughs> so, what season? I, I thought it was rabbit. No, it's duck season. It really is duck season. Um, right. You gonna pull it up for me? <coughs> All right, need the engineer. Where's the engineer? All right, the sound engineer is here. Anyway, um, every year the Glendale Kiwanis Club has a duck race. Here's a duck. Hey, bro, he's got a duck. All right, what did he say? What they do is very simple. They sell ducks just like that one there that I threw to that gentleman, except for they're yellow. That one happens to be a red one. They build a pond at Verdugo Park in the upper park, and then they build another pond at the bottom of the hill, and the bottom ducks, 20,000 ducks usually, go down the slough to the bottom in heat. Eventually, it comes down to just a few ducks. The winning duck is for $10,000. Now you say, oh, well, I'd never win it, but don't believe it, Jane, who is a member of this of FAA board actually didn't win the 10,000, but she did win a thousand a couple of years ago. So the I have the, the flyers here, and the way it works is we are the Foothill Autism Alliance is a duck buddy. So what happens is the ducks are. Um, is it five dollars? I forget. Yeah, five dollars for a duck, or you get a duck pack, which is six ducks for twenty-five bucks. Half the money comes to us. Yay! Yay! Yay. So, Honest Club keeps half, and we as duck buddies get the other half, which is why I'm standing up here trying to encourage you to buy ducks. So I have the flyers back at the desk. You can do it online, or you can send it in with a check. Uh, and I have the flyers. Hello, welcome. Uh, thank you all for coming out. This is our first official uh, resource meeting of the new season. And we have a great lineup tonight, a really important topic because if you have a kid with autism, that kid's going to become an adult with autism, and the chances are, at some point, you're going to think about what are they going to do for the rest of their life. So whatever age your child is, or if you're in the working area, or if you're a professional, um, this is a relevant topic for all of us. Um, so um, I just want to announce, unfortunately, one of our presenters, Sue Rubin, who's a pretty extraordinary woman, who has nonverbal autism and a types to communicate. She fell yesterday and broke her arm and is not going to be here tonight. Uh, but she did already pre-type her presentation, uh, so you will hear what she wanted you all to hear, and hopefully you can see a little bit of who she is. Um, uh, we have some visual presentation, so please be patient with us as we transition from one speaker to the next. and demonstrate some of the cool work that they're all doing. Uh, I am going to start by introducing our host for the night. It's not going to be me. It's going to be a young man who has an aspiration to become 
a game show host. So, since we all know in Hollywood, you know, dreams do come true, um, <laughs> lots of people come here or grow up here and, and want to do this in life. But um, it's not always the easiest path, right? And sometimes you have to do things along the way to pave the way for that dream job that you hope you get. Whether you have autism or not, that's kind of what life's about. So. Um, this young man that I'm going to introduce, he does volunteer work right now at my uh, gym, which I own, which is called We Rock the Spectrum in Glendale. And uh, thank you. Yeah, we're excited to have a place not just for kids to play and teenagers, but for young adults to come and learn job skills that they're going to then take on to really what they want to be doing. Because it may not be working at our gym, but we certainly have a lot to offer in terms of um, preparing them for what the other jobs out there are all about. So um, I'm gonna, I brought this up here because I wanted to remind myself to ask you all to please turn off your cell phones so they don't ring and they don't interrupt our presentation. And I'm going to turn it over now to Andrew Payne. Please welcome. Hey guys. Hi. <laughs> My mom got me started on that. She loves friends. Well, as, as you heard Deborah say, my name is Andrew Hain. I am a 23-year-old young adult with Asperger's Syndrome and high-functioning autism. And I am a recent graduate of Glendale Community College. <laughs> I have an associate's degree in television production mass media. My goal, as you heard Deborah say, is to be a game show host. I have enjoyed watching game shows since I was in the womb, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, in order to do that, I'll be, look, I'll be getting a job in the future related to game shows and or media. And as, and as Deborah said, living in near Los Angeles, it's a big deal. So, in terms of my education career, I started out as in, in a special day class, one year at Franklin, one year at Columbus. Then, thanks to my mom's efforts, I was fully included in our regular classroom at Muir until sixth grade, 2005, and then middle, Wilson Middle School, class of 2007, and Clark Magnet High School, class of 2011, and then of course GCC, Glendale Community College. I have done volunteer work in the past as well as some work experience. In the summer of 2009 and 2010, I volunteered at College View, which is a school for severely disabled children and young adults, both mental and physical. More physical? Well, just a... <coughs> more affected. More, more, more severely affected. And uh, from, from, from 2010 to... From, from October 2010 to... The end of February 2011, I did a work internship at Borders in Glendale, now closed. <laughs> it was part of the workability program through the Glendale Unified School District, where I alphabetized books and helped and put them in, on the on the appropriate shelves. And then in in 2015, I did a mentorship program at a channel I loved watching a lot since, since I was a little called Game Show Network. I learned about how game shows are screened, like Studio Master copies, if you will, um, and how what is done in master control to make sure that shows start and end on time, and how they, they can edit the length of commercials for their own shows. 
Then later that year, I did another internship at Buzzer, a DigiNet that shows vintage game shows. I, I did um, research on, a, on, on various game show moments, like when game shows started and, and premiered and ended, and contestants who became famous for their appearances on game shows. And, and, uh, and as you also heard Deborah say, as of the summer of 2014, I do volunteer at, <clears throat> excuse me, We Rock the Spectrum Kids Gym in Glendale. See the safety of kids as well as file paperwork and help distribute promotional materials for kids that may be interested in wanting to come to the gym. She's my right wing tonight. <laughs> she, she told me this prior, too, so... <laughs> you, know, you know, having autism, it has its benefits, but it also has its challenges. We all have things to learn every day, so... Thanks for your support over the years. I'm grateful to have you guys in my life. Oh yes, in 20, yes, thanks. My mom mentioned 2013 to 2015, I did a, I, I did, was it an internship? It was kind of a uh, paid internship. Right? Yeah, kind of paid internship-ish thing. <laughs> At, At uh, what used to be Pacific Child and Family Associates, now called Autism Learning Services, right? Learning Partners. Partners, I thought it was services. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Where I um, did basic office, office work. And uh, so, uh, anything else? Any questions you have about me? Uh, I have one. Yes, Vin. Fantastic, a uh, great start for your career. So you've been doing a lot of volunteer jobs and some pay ones. So I'm hoping you continue to develop your opportunity. But I do, you mentioned during your talk, workability in Glendale. Yes, workability, all, um, is it seniors all over GUSD? I don't know if the program still exists. Yeah, it probably does. It does? Yes. Okay. Oh, it still exists? Yeah. It's, so, it's a work study program sort of thing. Uh, work study. Yeah. Work study for, for, for just seniors? Juniors. Uh, and juniors and seniors, and then if they go into the FACTS program. Uh, for the FACTS program. Some of my friends oh, are, are, have been in the FACTS program. It's funded by the district. Funded by the district. You get paid for You get paid, yeah. You get paid. Yeah. The, the, the employer provides the job site, but not the funding. Exactly right. Most districts do have it. Uh, any, uh, well, else? Jason, were you raising your hand or just stretching? No, I'm just stretching. Oh. <laughs> I have another question. Oh, else uh, oh um, did you? So, um, I, so it's, it's great that you've been able to be employed for this long, this period of time. Do you, uh, how about going to work? Do you go on public transportation or are you driving? So, I don't drive. Okay. So. By, by choice, as Mom said. Um, I get there one of two ways, basically. Either my mom or dad or whoever drops me off, or if they're not around, I take the bus. I'm very capable of, or walk. So three ways. I, I'm very capable of being so independent. As many of you know, many people who are more severely affected they may be unable to, to be independent. Some of my friends are in a group home assisted by um, assisted by, um, by by someone who can help them get around. All right. Anyone else? Yudi. So so what's your next step towards your career as a game show host? What's your plan? This is where my mom berates me all the time. <laughs> Thank you for that question. <laughs> so, well, well, eventually I'll, I'll get a job. That's actually a two-part question. 
when you do get your first big job, are you going to move out and take your own apartment? That's really what I want to know. Mm. Well, with the economy, <laughs> sorry, <No>. folks. <laughs> sorry, folks. This election stuff is really starting to get to me. With the well, with the economy, and uh, well, as well, I said, being independent because I'm very high functioning, I'm able to be independent. A few times, I've actually it. I actually made my family disappear. <laughs> my my parents went went away first in 2015 to Europe for 12 days. 12 days. Then like three how three thousand miles away from home? Six. Yeah. Six? Whoa, even. <laughs> but I did perfectly. And then again, earlier this year, when they went away to uh, Canada. As a matter of fact, after the, their last days in the 2015 trip, Europe, uh, Europe they, they came to Canada. We have relatives in Canada. And so, it, it just, just goes to show how independent I can truly be. Yes, but you didn't answer the question. Are you eventually moving out? <laughs> I'd say yes, eventually, but there's another question. Um, so so um, this is sort of an audition tape, you know. Because um, what's your what's your what's your favorite um, uh, game show? Every night, except in summer reruns, we watch Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. Can you get, give me a little piece of? Of Will of Fortune? Really? <laughs> oh. That's oh. right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and Mom, did you have a question? I, I'm sorry to ask. <laughs> well, it wasn't a question. It went along with what Uni had said. I remember the days when Andrew was about 16, and he kept telling us when he was going to be 18, he was going to move out. <laughs> that day has come and gone. How many? Six years later, and he's still... I was, We're happy. He lives it's, it's home. Not, He's very helpful. So wait a minute. It's okay. Wait, wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. Andrew, you don't have to say anymore. I'm it's, just saying it's it's nice having you with. It, it's six. When I was sixteen, I, that that thought had long passed. I, <laughs> oh, okay. I think I there was, was a time when you said you were moving out. Yes, of I think okay. after middle school, I dropped the thought. <laughs> I got, I get this sense of humor from my dad, ladies and gentlemen. From, from, and also from my uncles. They get it from, from their dad, my, my papa's, we call him. And what? Wrap it up. You got? Yep. All right. All right. So now I, now I am going to introduce our first speaker. Though they'll, they'll each have about ten or fifteen minutes. You can ask them questions when they're done. So, the first speaker I'm going to introduce is someone who works for a very promising new business, which I'm sure many of you will like. Is it Gunji? Yep, that's the name of the business. Yeah, just, just had to make sure I'm pronouncing your business correctly. <laughs> Gunji. Each design is printed on cotton paper <coughs> using letterpress machines. They are, its official debut will be at the 2016 November Jackalope Crafts Fair at Pasadena Central Park. So let, now let's watch a video. Hi, Green. My yes. name is Eunice, and my sister Karen and I are co-founders of Komji. Komji is our gift shop business that we're launching in an attempt to create a space where Karen can do personally fulfilling work. Something you should know about Karen is that yes, she has autism, but more strikingly, she loves to connect with other people and give gifts. Specifically, she loves to make birthday cards, thank you cards. So to start, we are launching our own line of letterpress greeting cards. I'm Karen. I hope you like the different cards. Please enjoy. Thank you for visiting. Have fun! Yeah. Well, so 
something that Karen and I have in common. I, we both have autism and we both like connecting with people. All right, so I am pleased to introduce the creative dynamic duo. Creativeness. Karen and Eunice Im? Yeah. Im. You're a role. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> this, this support I get is overwhelming. <laughs> Karen graduated from South Pasadena High in 2010, and her, and her love for life motivates her to take advantage of whatever opportunities come her way. During, in a regular week, she'll be at the Armory Center painting class, or she might be completing office tasks at an LA cardiology office, or she might even just explore the community with her independent living skills coach. Yeah. Karen's motto is never give up. Yeah. Good yeah. 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 As for her sister Eunice, a proud sib. Love that word sib. <laughs> like, like slang. It's a sibling of someone with special needs. As a sib, she has a vested interest in disability issues. She's a recent graduate of, from the USC Cal, California Leadership Education in Neurodevelopmental Disabilities Program. And she is currently a student at the Keck Graduate Institute in Pomona, California. And without further ado, Karen and Eunice in, come on down. Hello everybody, my name is Karen In. I want to be an artist. Right now, I design them many different cards. I print them at a letterpress studio in Los Angeles. I hope you like the many cards, everybody. Please enjoy and thank you for listening. Thank you so much for giving us your time and your attention for the meeting today. I, it's a privilege for me to be part of the panel with Noah and Eric and my sister. And actually the comments that Andrew made kind of that summarizes everything that I need to say. So I'll just add some uh, brief comments and then leave the rest of the time open for questions and answers. I'd love to know what questions you have. And also if you have any tips too, I'd love to hear that. So. Um, you've already heard a little bit about me, and um, our, a little bit of our story is, as many of you know, once, um, once individuals with autism or any form of special needs graduates from high school, the amount of supports and services that are available after that age significantly decreases. Professionals call it a service cliff occurs at that age 18. and. So we kind of fumbled around for a few years figuring out what would be a good fit for my sister. And I personally felt uh, very motivated to figure out a solution given all of the things that I saw my parents go through in terms of investing their time and their efforts to make sure that she was in the right class in elementary school, middle school, and high school, going to all the IEP meetings and speech therapy classes and art classes and all this stuff. And, I didn't want to see that go to waste. I wanted there to be some sort of um, return on that investment somehow, some way. And uh, we found that the micro enterprise option was a good fit for us given uh, the skill sets that Karen has and also the flexibility that it lends to a person's life. We thought that would be a good next step for us. And so, uh, as the video kind of summarizes, we are um, launching a kind of a gift shop, small business from our home. Um, because uh, Karen, ever since she was younger, she uh, expressed a strong interest in the arts. And not particularly the fine arts, so we, did, we didn't see a need for her to pursue, let's say, a master's in fine arts or whatever. She really liked making gifts for people, creating small pictures to give to her friends. And so we thought this would be a good uh, way for her to make some money on the side. So. I'll leave my comments there. 
Um, I'll, I'll share one story. I, brought, I, I prepared one story. So just to summarize kind of our motivation behind the business, um, there, during that period after my sister graduated from high school, there were many days, many evenings, I spent on my desk worried, as some of you uh, probably know very well, that level of anxiety, just not knowing what's going to happen in the future, what options would be available, when those options would be available. And I remember my sister, one particular evening, she called me out, she's like, Eunice, come outside. I was like, Karen, leave me alone. I'm trying to figure this out. I have the world on my shoulders. And I'm trying to figure out what, what's going on. And um, she wanted me to go outside to see the sunset. And that particular day, the sky was gorgeous. It was, there were purples and pinks in the sky. It was a particularly beautiful evening. And if I didn't have Karen in my life at that particular moment, I would have missed it. And so um, that, it, it's moments like that that keep us motivated to weather the storms and uh, keep forging ahead on finding solutions. Because solutions are out there depending on what your needs are and what you're able to do. So I'll leave my comments there. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And also, um, so Karen's motto in life is never give up. She says that all the time. And we brought some cards for sale. For, for those of you who would be interested, they're available in the back. We sell these cards $3.75 a piece through our website. But because we are so honored to be here with you all, we want to make them available at $3 per card. So um, I'll, we'll be available at the table at the end of the meeting if um, you'd like to purchase any cards from us. So thank you for listening. Good question. Um, there is a really cool nonprofit arts community center in Pasadena called the Armory Center. And out of their selection of classes, they have one called Letterpress. And that's where we kind of delved into that world. We both delved into it, and we love the process. We love the aesthetic um, product, or the aesthetically pleasing product that comes out of that process. And my sister loved it, and we saw that it, that that particular way of producing a gift product would be something that she could do on her own, and would align with her artistic interests. So we thought, hey, let's give it a try and see where it goes. How many business? We uh, so our we haven't officially debuted to the community. That's coming up in November, but we've um, our we did all the legal paperwork and all of that. December of last year. So we've been working hard to get prepared so we can make our debut. Okay. Uh, when you say legal paperwork, so what does it entail to start a small business? Sure, like so um, I don't want to get too much into technical stuff because number one, that'll re reveal the level of uh, ignorance that I have at, in, in terms of the <laughs> business world. But it, it can get quite technical too, so I don't want to bore you with the details. Um, there are various entities a business that you can take on, depending on what operation you're endeavoring to launch. The very basic form is sole proprietor. So that's you just taking your own assets to launch a business. And it's under your name, it's connected with your assets. It's the simplest form of business and it's the most accessible. So, so we're starting there. Um, but there's some cons because if, let's say, something happened with the business, it's attached to your own personal assets. So that's not preferable for the, for the long run. You can do LLC, so limited liability corporation. Um, that comes at a $70 filing fee and an additional yearly fee of $800, but people treat that as an insurance policy because once you form an LLC, it's something LLC, not you personally. So, and then there's lots of other things. You could be a corporation. That's where my own expertise stops, but um, it's surprisingly easy to become a sole proprietor, which is what I found. And so we thought, hey, let's give it a try. Yes. How did you come up with the oh, names too? Oh, oh, there is a funny story with the name. So I was going to name it something really cool like KE Social Business. But then my sister was like, no, let's name it after our dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was very smart of her because yeah. my name would kind of sound kind of dry and yeah. boring. So we had a, we, and um, actually our dog, Yorkshire Terrier, she passed away 
So this is kind of in memoriam to our dog. But we thought this would be a fun kind of name for our business. And what's, what's interesting about Yorkshire Terriers in particular is that they're very small, but they think that they're bigger than their size. And they're actually known for being very industrious. In the UK, they were used on farms to catch rats in the barn. So even though they're small, they're, you know, they find a way to make themselves useful. So we thought, hey, you know, that, that's a good fit with kind of our spirit and who we want to be in the future. So. Yes? I was wondering if you've ever considered offering classes for other young adults. That is a great question. We have some long-term goals as to what we would want to be in the future. We, we, of course, we want to be a for-profit entity, but we do want to be very much integrated into the autism community, knowing that there are issues, not just in California, but nationally, in terms of services and supports that are available to individuals with autism. And so that is an option that we're considering, but we'll have to find partners and see who we can connect with to make that happen. But thank you for that question. Yes? That was um, related to my question. Do, do you have any plans of expanding to create job opportunities for other adults? Yes, that is actually the main reason why I decided to get involved. Um, I have, um, given that I'm a sibling, and I also have interest in pursuing professional studies to kind of be, I guess, how would you say? I Long term wise, even in my career, I want to be a part of empowering those with autism long term. Do you and so, your contact info after? Oh, yes, of course. Sure. Um, I'll be at the table. Um, but uh, we, do, we do hope to expand, but we'll take it step by step. With business, I've learned it's smart to be conservative, <laughs> at least in the beginning, and get the foundation strong before you launch to bigger um, initiatives, initiatives and efforts. But that is something that we are considering seriously for the long term. Yes? Uh, so it seems like um, you and your sister connected on this. Yes. Yeah, um, um, was it always that way? or and, and do you have other siblings? Good question. Good question. So we do have an older brother. Um, but uh, given the... So I have an older, we have an older brother. I'm in the middle. And then we have Karen. So naturally because of the age, we spend more time together. And given that we're girls, <laughs> we tend to spend more time together. And given that I'm like the older sister, you know, the parents usually, usually will ask the, the daughter to kind of pitch in with support needs and things like that. And I was happy to, to fill in as needed. But I would say um, my perspective on my sister changed uh, significantly when I was in high school. Before then, I, I, I have to confess, I had a rather... Uh, pessimistic view on my sister and her autism, I actually, towards the long, in the long term, didn't really want to stay involved. But then around that time, number one, I matured. <laughs> and uh, there were other things going on in my life. But I, I realized that not only does my sister have inherent dignity, I realized that everyone with special needs has an inherent dignity. They need to be respected, and they need to be empowered. And so um, I would say, a lot of what we're doing now is kind of coming forth from that time when I was in high school. I really kind of had to come to grips with that reality. So. But you seem like you like you 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 both like. Did you have interests that were? Um, no, that, no, no, no. Okay. I was more That's into. Um, I was interested in uh, ultimate frisbee and chemistry class and. Uh, things of that sort, and my sister was into art class and more of the kind of cozy little uh, hobbies. And, uh, but we connected with Lettercrest, so that's uh, something we need about our journey together. Yes? I have a question for Jen. Of course. How are you going to let people know how your product and work? That is, how are you going to market your product? Well, market is until the next one, November, we're going to have the fair at the Pasadena, Pasadena Park. There's, a, there's something that our website is www.country.com. Please look at the different menu the card and the how much the card this is my user told me the idea about website, internet address. Let's 
move on and look to our next panelist, who I have actually known for almost almost 20 years now. Wow. Is Noah Schneider is a character designer and visual effects artist who is 21, almost 22. He graduated from Glendale High School in 2014. That's when you got your diploma, although you walked in 2013. And the, the things I know about, it's my useless knowledge, basically. And he, also, and he just graduated this past June from Exceptional Minds. His mother you just heard from earlier introducing the meeting. He is currently working at, at Exceptional Lines, the studio, doing animation, visual effects, and tile work. Noah Schneider, come on down. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm sure some of you heard of me or know me before. Um, I am no, I am 21 years old currently, and and I am a 2016 graduate of Exceptional Minds, and currently I'm in the AM studio right now. So, what you're going to see right now is all my work that I did throughout the three years of Exceptional Minds. Mainly my best work, of course, but because um, you can't include every single bit of piece in your reel and all that. Um, what you're going to see here is my reel. Enjoy, folks. EM studio. It's a long story short, but um, things kind of got a little complicated for me getting to the whole thing with VFX because originally I was more of a creative person that loves to draw and all that at first. Um, but then later, like since this beginning, since yesterday or two days ago, I'm starting to get the hang of VFX because think of it as like solving a math equation but doing it for one concept. It's like that, multiple ways of doing one thing. And it was a big challenge for me at first, because I was used to learning one step for learning something new. So, I finally got the grasp of the concept, and I feel really accomplished right now. So, um, so right now, about myself, what I like to do in my free time is, um, I love doing figure drawings, and landscapes, character designs, environments, and animation, of course. Um, that's what I do right now. So, as of right now, um, I was originally a graduate of Glendale High School before I got into EM since 2014. Um, right now, I right now my plan, my plan that I kind of envision for myself right now is 
I'm planning to work in the EM studio from now until next year of June. And then, and then i going to plan to go from there is I'm actually going to plan to start being a full-time college, full college student at Pasadena City College in August of next year. And the reason why I'm doing this EM studio for like basically kind of like a year because I didn't have enough work experience before I came to Exceptional Minds. And I kind of realized to myself that I kind of felt lazy and didn't push myself enough, you know, to gain that experience. So, um, so this is why I'm taking the opportunity right now before things get not so easy to do. So, um, so, so, so in the summer before I start PCC, I'm actually going to start doing an art business. Actually, selling my digital paintings and all that stuff because I also want to pursue my artistic passion in between college semesters as a business a little bit here and there. So, and my plan is also to be do one semester of Pasadena City College in the fall and then just to get the gain the gain the artistic and college experience just for a semester. And then my plan in January twenty eighteen is to go into an art college like at Art Center or Norman School of Visual Effects. So I'm applying to six art schools for 2018. So, and also, um, what inspired me to do animation and drawing is looking at art books, Picasso, Salvador Dali, of course, with the surrealism junk. And, um, and also, I also got inspired by many art instructors that I got inspired by within and I've done figure drawing since high school, like at Art Center for teens and all that stuff, since I was in high school. And I've been doing figure drawing since high school for a while, and I kind of improved throughout the years and see myself grow into something that I never would have accomplished a lot. So, in some ways, I feel like I accomplished a lot throughout the years. And, and there were some ups and downs in my life at times that I kind of had to go through and deal with, but I managed to get through it. So, um, in some ways I'm finally back on my feet, my normal routine, drawing and everything else. So, and also, um, beyond, beyond that, from going to PCC for a semester and going to an art college in 2018 for like another three or four years, is my plan is to be a character designer and a visual development artist because I seen myself that um, that I love to draw, being imaginative, creative, and bring something to life that no one hasn't even thought of in the first place. So, um, so that's what I really want to do the most. I don't mind VFX to start off, just to get into the field, you know, just as a main thing to back myself into as a technical, as a technical. Um, as basically like uh, to just to know to get into the field. So um, I don't mind it as much, but in the inside I kind of felt I was wanted to do more artistic things because I'm more of a creative guy besides a technical person. So and and I learned that even though I have autism, I can still follow my dream no matter how hard life takes to begin with. And, Questions, questions? So I, I have a question. If we couldn't get your website to play, but why don't you give people your website address? So they All right. Your Thanks website. for the reminder. <laughs> All right. So I have a website. This is just the stuff I have right now. I'm sure you have some notebooks. You can write this stuff down. And can you give out your card later? And I might give you out my business card later after the event. Thank you, Mom. What's your website address? My website address is www saucerentertainment.com It's saucerentertainment.com like the sci-fi flying saucer that flies over the moon like <laughs> <laughs> Yes? So um, when did you first start uh, drawing? And I have two questions. Yes. And are you it, I noticed on the bottom of the, the animated, animated reel that there were Adobe uh, um, 
so they were different pieces of Adobe software. Yeah. Are you Adobe uh, certified? So when did you first start? And I wanted to find out about Adobe. What do you mean, the certification or? The certification. Well, when I was in three years of exceptional minds, we got tests so we can get accredited in programs. Well, I'm accredited in Adobe Flash and Adobe Premiere CS6 and um, that's basically how about it. And Photoshop. So those are the three programs I'm certified as of right now. Great. And when did you, when did you first start drawing? Well, um, when I first started drawing, it was basically um, it was basically like tenth grade in high school. Okay. That's what got me in, into the whole thing. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. I, I, I have known you know, since you were three, I think. And to answer your question, Clarence, he was drawing when he was three. Oh, God. I met okay. you so at um, one of the restaurants in Glendale, and you were standing at the table, you know, coloring, you know, with mark, um, crayons. And just the spirit of your little intensity with that crayon and the paper and nothing on the paper, you were just waiting for your meal. And you have touched my heart then, and it's so, I'm so proud of you and the person you have become, the young adult you have become, and mm -hmm. to see exceptional minds like yours in animation and creativity, it's just, mm. the world is at your feet. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it's a website, and to post all my drawings and videos and all that stuff, and I also have a Facebook page for you guys if you want to follow up on my website for any like updations. I'm going to make update for next year and all that stuff. So, so you know to see recent works and all that stuff. Yes. No. How do you get around? Well, right now I actually drive. I drive myself. I drive a Lexus. Twenty thousand. <laughs> I totally do. It actually is a really huge stress reliever for me. It's a really huge stress reliever not to think about much else. And it's like being in my own world. How, how old were you when you learned? Well, beginning of this year. Okay, just recently. Yeah. Okay. Yes? question? Just like we asked and... Um, Get the website to run. Unfortunately, we're in a school and they block a lot of websites, so but no one's got. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, I um, I have to say, um, and just did on um, uh, the, the the woman earlier about. I saw a piece of your work in the New York New York Times magazine, mm -hmm. and I know your work and. The animation's great, but your, the work that comes from your heart is incredible. Thank I, you. I come from artists. My, both my parents are fine artists. And your work is really incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, what does it do when you can, before you start something and then you see it, when you finish it, how does that feel? Like, Feels very accomplishing, of course. Okay, I guess that was <laughs> that was pretty much the answer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I guess I couldn't get more than that. I, I will say Noah draws 24-7. He is, every minute, waking hour, he is drawing when he's not in school and working. Pretty much I draw for three hours pretty much every night. I do push for it. Because it's kind of like seeing yourself grow. When you do it constantly, you see yourself grow into a whole new person you don't expect to be. Yes. So that was kind of like my other um, idea is, are you, are, do you envision yourself somewhere or are you just experiencing where your growth takes you? That's a good question. Um, so what it feels to me is that whenever I draw it takes me, feels like it takes me to like a other new dimension or another world that I never seen myself into. Yes? Do you hand draw or do you use a Well, 
I do a variety of mediums like digital painting and Photoshop, and um, and I like drawing things by hand as well because I like drawing things by hand. It's good to exercise your wrist and your hand when you're drawing with curvature lines and all that. So it's good for your hand to do it traditionally. I like doing things on newsprint, different kinds of tone paper, and I like doing things digitally. Yes? You take after your dad. He was what? A, your dad was an amazing artist as well. That was a good point. He actually inspired me as well. Aww. Yes? Um, there's something called drawing on the right side of the brain. It's almost like when you go to this other place, I'm an artist. So when you draw, there's a place you go to that seems like another world. Correct. It's the same with driving. Yeah. <laughs> with driving? Yeah, it's on the right side How of the brain. Are people driving to? Yeah. <laughs> to drive in London? Oh, seriously? <laughs> anyway, no, it's, it's a comment. Good one, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, what inspired me to also do this is I watch cartoons like X rated, R R X -rated cartoons and R rated cartoons. And I also love. Um, I also, what I also get inspired by. What is it? A cartoon swim? No. What is it? Adult, Adult swim. swim. I also watch R rated. I, watch it too. I also watch South Park. It got me inspired to do this type of stuff. Yeah. And um, I also, I don't know if some of you heard, I'm also watch Ralph Bakshi's R rated movies. That's okay. animated. You're they 21. Get, yes. Okay. Pretty much. And, <laughs> And I also watch Fritz the Cat, it's my favorite one. Ooh. My favorite X-ray cartoon. Okay. <laughs> that is quite correct, Andrew Hain. Yeah. It's my knowledge. Yes? You recommend people under the age of, like this, are 17, do you recommend it or do not? Um, the only recommendation, wait till you're 18, dude. Could I ask him? I ask him. Let me take your medicine. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, that's, little, that's for her, that's for ghosts. <laughs> so that's why I asked him, like, you were a little kid, so you didn't really know. I don't remember. I think over 18 is a good idea. Yeah, thanks. Yep, yeah, that is correct. <laughs> Thank you, Norm. No problem. You can't have just ask that. Yes. <laughs> so, any last few words? So, you're passionate drawing, and everything you do is passionate drawing. Do you have any other things that you'd like to do? Um, for the most part, I mostly just do drawings and painting and all that stuff most times. I used to play games, but I'm not into that much anymore. I've grown out of it. So, How about movies? Well, I mostly watch, I might watch, my favorite type, I go to movies most often at times. But I also like to watch animated features in terms of storytelling, composition to storytelling, and also the art of an animated film I get inspired by a lot. I do have to say that, Noah, you do have a have a passion for animation and your dad was just a, a great guy and we will all remember Bob as a true gentleman and I'm happy that you're having fun driving very soon you'll get a new car <laughs> I'm sorry folks I had to. I'm sorry folks I had to it's my love of game shows